Hi there. Today I thought I'll speak about art. Speaking about art is boredom, proper boredom, three-dimensional boredom. But I thought I'll induce some energy by taking a, a cheesy title. So I will be presenting Number Games. That's the title of my talk for the next 45 or so minutes. I will try to dissect the Carnatic music industry across multiple cross-sections and from different angles. I would bring in the context of multiple stakeholders. I'm not trying to solutionize or I will not even attempt to solutionize, albeit I may bring about certain advice, suggestion from my perspective. I've been in the arts, programmation, delivery and design of concerts, venues and music festival scenario for the past decade or so and I just thought I had a compelling story to share with people who have interest in the Carnatic music industry. Hey, I said the word industry. I'm in doubt really within myself if it's an industry because moment I say industry, well, the first thing I think about in my mind is a set of processes laid out, documented, a set of template for everything. A process, a template, a document, accountability, audit, external auditors, quality checks, right? We know all this. An industry has people, a stakeholder, it's got pretty democratic themes. So is Carnatic music industry really an industry or is it a hoax? Is it a facade? Alternatively, can I put the problem statement this way? Is Carnatic music industry Yes, it does not stand for the whole of India. India has a population of 1,400 million people. It's a lot many zeros there. And I'm not even saying Carnatic is, is for everybody. It's, a, it's of an esoteric, esoteric genre, meaning it's not for everybody. It needs a certain qualification. Carnatic music has a niche audience, an audience with a certain acquired taste. You don't have to be trained, but to go deep and understand and appreciate Carnatic music, to design concerts, to deliver events, you need to be slightly beyond numbers and you can't be a non-musician in the Carnatic music sense. So the question that I ask myself very often in the last decade or so is, can just a handful of A-listers, top-notch artists, we call them with different adjectives. We call them eminent artists, legendary violinist, and, and so on and so forth. Adjectives being adjectives. Now, can just a bunch of artists, musicians, performers, insiders to the Carnatic music industry, connections with grants givers, politicians, NGOs, art bodies, award dishing agencies, can just this small handful of people represent the entirety of the Carnatic music industry is the question. And I would leave the question as a question until the next 35, 40 minutes. And maybe collectively we have got somewhere in our search for a solution, not the solution, but definitely a solution that can be implemented as a base. So the hypothesis I go with is have the A-listers disproportionately bitten a large chunk of the offerings or the opportunities out there in the industry. To bring this down to mathematics, have 20% of the Carnatic music industry participants usurped or bitten a chunk of 80% of the opportunities that's there. So this 2080 we have heard in different parallels. It's called Pareto numbers, yeah? Pareto analysis. So when I analyze, I feel it's the same 20% repeat, shall we say, performers. We can't say repeat offenders here because it's no offense to perform when you can. But 
it's the same 20% repeat performers, repeat artists that get slotted in 80% of the times. So this is worth analyzing. I would like to disprove this as much as I like, but facts have their own direction in my analysis, which I'll cover in my next 30, 35 minutes of uh, presentation. So objective here is to achieve Pareto defiance. So I've come up with this term. So objective of the Carnatic music industry in the next five years, 10 years, must be to achieve Carnatic, to achieve Pareto defiance. So now who are the stakeholders here? Just the artists? No. Yes, definitely artist is the is in the epicenter. The artist per se. Alongside the artist, all the supporting elements and agencies, like the government that holds strings to the purse of many grants, as I mentioned earlier. A lot of money that comes into the art industry comes via grants, awards, financial support, aids. So government definitely, number two, universities and their libraries, venues and festivals and organizations, and a, a, a subset of organization or a subset of organization called, or, or something that falls into the artist-led organizations, right? So it has a certain vested interest. Uh, it may not be all, all bad, uh, in, in that sense of the term, but artist-led organizations and finally, definitely not the, not uh, the least in terms of priority, the corporate sponsors that are trying to wear the hat of CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility. So these stakeholders will be analyzed in detail in the next some time. So stand by and keep sending your questions if you have any to info at dhruvarts.org. All right, welcome back. Now, I said we will be analyzing all the stakeholders. Shall we start with the government? Because that is a single body which offers a sizable chunk of the available grants. Again, Pareto might help here. I think 80% of the sponsorship will come from government. Right, now, what, what is government's role in shaping up Carnatic music industry? Honestly, every time I say Carnatic music industry, I don't intend that the audience understands this as a, a huge uh, and a separate field to North Indian music industry, right? Hindustani and Carnatic music, in terms of its deliverance, in terms of its nature of existence, have a lot of commonality. But here I say Carnatic music industry with the sheer experience that I have gained in delivering events in Dhruv Arts and other organizations, both within India and without. Having seen art being deliver delivered Having been a beneficiary myself many a times across four continents, I have a compelling story to say and share. We have government grants that flows into every aspect of arts delivery. And here again, when I say arts or Carnatic music, it is music, but this can be mutandis, mutandis applied across to other parts of the uh, art industry. It could be drama, theatre and likewise. So, what are the stakes of uh, government units, government organizations here? What can they do in terms of making this industry more visible, more accountable, more transparent and deliver more art for every one rupee, one dollar they spend? Isn't it? I mean, that's what we are all trying to achieve. one thing we have to collectively build is the doing well class always continue to do well. This is one thing I hate. We all hate. 
the doing well class continues to do so. They do well. Now, what, what can we do to avoid this? What can we do to, do to democratize, share opportunities, slots, resources, funds? So I have certain suggestions. Definitely, I haven't got an exhaustive list here, but see, now, can we all not think if there is a festival, I will not want Mr. or Mrs. A to keep performing in that event year after year. You will be surprised. I've got some statistics here that is going against what you and I want, what the Carnatic music industry at large wants. For example, E-listers have performed in almost all the big festivals in a big way. And when I say big way, I'm telling you 77% I took 20 festivals across India, which, is, which has got a lot of dollars potential, which pays big checks. 77% of the A-listers get repeated there. And it's the same set, give and take, 2 or 3%. 77% of the festivals that I analyzed from the recent past, pre-pandemic, it had the same performers. They were all good performers, talent rich. They were bleeding edge talent. I'm not having any comments on, on, on their suitability to perform, but it's about the invisibility of other talent. That is the problem with repeat performers. So here, when I tell you 77% of Yale listers are repeated in many festivals across India. You will be surprised. And this is one thing that we must and we should address in the short term. So also, we sell surnames better in India. Britishers were very, very keen on our surnames. While we didn't have a concept of surnames, thanks to England, uh, our surname uh, became pretty centered, uh, a thing of center focus. So here, we, music has become a, a family business in many, in many parts of uh, uh, the country. So it's become a dynastic business. And I also use the word surname magic. If you have a certain surname, I'm telling you, you can gain momentum easily. You may have talent, but somebody else has a better talent. But a mediocre talent gains faster momentum in the arts industry, Carnatic music arts industry with a magic surname, with certain magic surnames. I don't have to name names because naming names brings bad names. So this 80%, 20% is what we have analyzed already. We have spoken about dollars. Now high vis shows. When I say high vis shows, these are shows that's got high visibility, maybe not dollar stakes. It's not a lot of money there, but it's a high vis, right? So now again, 18% of A-listers performed in high vis shows. You'd be surprised why only 18% because then there are B-listers before the real big talent pool comes. B-listers got 75% of the high vis shows while only 50% of... Uh, so, so this is what I'm telling. So now A-listers take 77% 77, 77 of the cash, for example, dollars. B-listers take 70, 75% of the visibility. Now, local upcoming raw talents, not so much exposed, are hardly getting any visibility. 8% of the dollar goes to them, money, and 7% of the high visibility shows go to, go to them. So, so this is some food for, for us to think about. Uh, it's a food for thought. Now, again, there was a very famous hubba, Bengaluru hubba. I was speaking to the organizer. It, it's a shame that she was mentioning to me uh, that it's very difficult. Sponsors give you a lot of cash, but then they, they almost dictate and design the, the shows. They actually hire. They almost have given a word to their, uh, their artist before they give you the money. So as a festival curator, the ex-curator the curator, ex -curator was telling me that I have very less say in this. So what's the point? We get a lot of money and we are getting a non-classical performer to take 80, 90% of the cash. So we just thought there was no return on investment working for 
uh, a habba that's that lacks focus in terms of delivery on the Carnatic music. So, so this is something that we must also think about. The time share, time slots between classical and commercial shows. Yes, some of the classical shows are commercially viable. But mind you, the term classical, when I was speaking to Dr. Balamurli Krishna way back a decade ago, he mentioned the term classical means something that's there to stay. It may not sell tickets today. It may not bring in a lot of crowd through the doors and windows. But a classical art form, a classical cuisine, a classical dressing. We are all thinking about sari now, aren't we? This is here to stay and this is why it is classical. And we need to do something to, to preserve, present classical music. We have to cover that extra mile. So this is the focus. Now, again, this Pareto comes here. 80% of the shows that are successful, that gets money, that gets visibility, that gets media attention, that gets TV channels running behind them is, again, commercial music. And classical music hardly gets any. To me, classical music is the science and other forms are its application. Right? You have pure science and you have application. You have diodes, triodes, and then, then you have electronic gadgets. You have PCBs, electronics, and then you have truckloads of gadgets. So to me, classical music, the solfa, the sarigama padani, is the building block of any music. And if that is not well protected, tomorrow we may lose, as a culture, we may lose the ability to create new jai hos and new Bollywood themes and new Tamil music industry songs. And, and you know, I'm talking about many things, not just. Then there will be argument about folk music having no connection with Sarigama Padani by some of these uh, contrarians. And I love contrarians because I am myself one. So, uh, so let's move on to this, uh, this populist versus talent uh, discussions that I always hear behind the scenes. Have we all, most of the South Indians would have come up with this, uh, come across this trio. NTR, MGR and Rajkumar. One uh, from Andhra, Telugu speaking, one from Tamil speaking and one from Kannada speaking film industry. They stood their ground for, for decades, if I'm not wrong, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Now, I love all the three uh, actors. I have, I've got nothing against NTR, MGR and Rajkumar, but what such superheroes do is, uh, will they curb other artists' opportunity? Now, this is a question to ponder about, right? I mean, these were superheroes, right? So individually, I have no qualms with them. But the point is, they, they almost stood in the center of these film industries because I don't want to take names in the Carnatic music industry. I'm trying to use this analogy from the film industry. Now, when I was growing up, uh, let's say, let's put this uh, on the timeline, 20, uh, 1999, 200, uh, 2000, sorry, or 1995, 1998, there were three young men who were raving up in the Carnatic music industry. They were seen everywhere. Absolutely stunning music, brilliant energy, a lot of new pieces, nice uh, presentation skills. They would carry on, uh, themselves with a lot of gaiety, grace, beautiful Carnatic dynamics. That's not what I'm trying to come to. There may have been many, another 300, another 3,000 such people who lost the chance until unless we defy this populism, until unless sponsors, artists, organizers, festivals, and as I mentioned, people, those stakeholders that, that hold the strings of those big purses of grants and public aid until they think beyond populism. We can't produce as many artists, top A-listers that we need. Again, just a word of caution for all the people who are more, more concerned about my contrarian views. I'm not anti-A-listers because a lot of A-listers are in my close friendship circle. So it's not about, I want to expand the A-listers. I want everyone to be A-listers if possible, but there are certain human limitations. So we, we have to do everything within our will to see if we can give opportunities to uh, not just a select few, not just the 20%, not just the top 5%, but to the rest. Now, when I said repeat offenders earlier, how many of you may have seen 
uh, festivals of India outside, I'm not sure. But you will see the same names or the same surname, you know, the next gen musician going around with either the same instrument or the same uh, talent to uh, many countries. In the same year, a, a talent could have visited 10 odd countries, while there are other people in this world, in this part of the world of 1,400 million people, as I mentioned earlier, that needs to be heard, seen and experienced. So, we have spoken much about the government. What, what additional things can government do? They can create insurances, can't they? For artists, for uh, events, for example, I'm hosting an event. If it's washed out because of rain, can the government protect such festivals by partaking in the insurance premiums? On a rainy day, I can't sell concert tickets, right? So, uh, we, and this is not for every damn festival, I'm sorry. All I'm telling is there must be some top level festivals that are identified per se, per region, across the states, across the country, across the length and breadth of this country. Let's make no mistake, India is a huge congregation of people, way too many. We've got 40 plus languages whose speakers are in probably 40, 50, 60 million plus population. I mean, this is a grand scale I'm talking about. So India is a concept. It's not a theme that can be run by a book. So insurance for artists and, and you know, other facilities like electronic IDs and other benefits. One thing I liked about the pandemic or, or what I liked in uh, the way organizations, NGOs, governments are doing off late in the last 18, uh, 16 months, whatever, since pandemic. One thing we have learned since 2020 January is our public administration, our governance, our delivery, our communication, our use of technology for ourselves, not for foreign banks, has increased big time. The efficacy of consumption of this technology, A, eh, and delivery. So we are able to write apps, we are able to talk to the rural people, and we are all tech savvy. In India, everyone does WhatsApp, everyone does social media. Uh, so that said, we must now go and reach out to rural artists. Government must also tr look at certain art forms that are dying. And moment I say dying art forms, to me, I think about Nadaswara, the, temp the grand temple pipes, the king of flutes, Nadaswara. On my screen, you can see uh, a senior gentleman, a senior artist. You can see his, his, his neck is literally popping out. As a child, I thought it would burst after a certain number of years. Now we need to real, I mean, this is a health hazard for him to blow big time, big pressure, hold on to that pressure all the time. It's a health hazard. So things like this, I think we need to really get under the skin of these artists, such musicians. And we need to build Pan-India, publicly visible, publicly visible, that's the catch, uh, buzzword, that's a buzzword. Publicly visible databases of all the beneficiaries, be it individual or organizations, be it festivals or venues, that has got government funds in the name of supporting arts. Yes, we need to know who got funds. It's a taxpayer's money. It's no king throwing a, a necklace of 24 karat gold onto his select choice of artists. This fund that I'm talking about is from the pool of taxpayer funded cash, isn't it? So, so we need to have a public, pan-India public database of all the beneficiaries in, in every form. And lobbying for awards to be replaced by meritocratic processes. We need meritocracy. We need, uh, uh, we need metrics that can measure who deserves what as opposed to lobbying and physical and logical and relational proximity to the awards, uh, to the agencies and individuals dishing, dishing out the awards. Okay, that said, now we need a whole revamp of uh, our awards institutions and awards dishing out process. Government can do a lot of thing, things. Uh, it must do many more things, right? There's no end to 
we, what uh, to defining our paths to the best model but we must begin today transparency beating nepotism beating dynastic models of uh, opportunities uh, being ta uh, t given dished out and representation uh, let's be democratic this is uh, what we all collectively must ask for i could be a corporate sponsor giving out cash i could be a festival organizer literally uh, uh, programming the arts for a particular festival or a government agency giving out money or, or a musician myself, a sen senior musician really must voice out concern. Otherwise, we may lose one generation of performers to nothingness. This picture is really intense. When I see such pictures, and I've seen quite a few of them, it speaks a million words. Nagaswaram, the instrument that took temple music to its pinnacle, is now dying out. Where? In the very temples that the holy sounds of Nadaswaram sanctified. Ladies and gentlemen, really this, is, this needs attention from all of us. Uh, this is where, now, where, where I was talking about opportunities, I was talking about insurance, I was talking about social recognition. These people need it. I was visiting one of the, I, I think I'm coming towards the end of uh, focus on uh, the government and what it can do, but, but this is really uh, very funny and it needs a lot of work across every, uh, in every unit of the governance, government unit. It could be a district or a state or, or a region or the nation as a whole. I went to uh, uh, a website that's maintained by the government of India. And I went, uh, I was trying to look for all the cultural festivals of India, not the religious, the one that I've circled in blue. And under music, there were only three festivals. So, so what I'm trying to say is, are we really doing our work seriously at every level, at all levels? Intense work is required. So these are definitely not the only three music festivals. And I went to certain universities that are dishing out government universities, aided universities that are dishing out courses, right? Uh, they, they offer a plethora of courses, art related. When I try to download their, their curriculum, uh, you will have a laugh. Uh, one of them was just an empty PDF and other things had no email, it was just a template, so, and all sorts. So what we really need to do is give this uh, uh, area of uh, uh, give this area a lot of focus where we bring in quality contents where a person from a from a rural uh, location can access download read and make decisions whether this university is good for me whether this institution is good for me uh, uh, so far uh, so far and so forth so uh, the quality of content on the government uh, websites are, are quite inferior while that was said, uh, uh, focus on the second bullet here uh, for a second. I have got a lot of appreciation for the Ministry of Education's this particular initiative. I don't want to take the pains of reading out the whole URL. Uh, a click will take you there. But it's a fine example of creating the new material, the new generation cool material, right? So I, 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 I beg all of you to really visit, uh, visit this Ministry of Education's initiative. They have brought about brilliant uh, content. Uh, it's all on YouTube. It explains every aspect. For example, I was trying to find what's uh, in it for me, meaning uh, from the Carnatic music industry perspective. There's a lot of material they've given. I think I found about 180, 190 odd videos. Highest quality, very well explained. And the narrative was something that the indigenous people can own up to. It was not Carnatic music as explained and seen from a, from a Videshi perspective, right? I have nothing against uh, outsiders analyzing my music, our music, but then there is a certain cultural uh, 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 difficulty that people from outside face, uh, right? While, uh, while appreciating what's uh, in it for us. Yes, their English is good, their presentation is good, uh, their publications are absolutely world-class. 
this is something that we need to copy. We need to emulate, not simply copy. We can improve. So, so from an indigenous Swadeshi uh, itihas writing or Swadeshi research of musicology, we are doing a lot. Uh, thanks to the government at this uh, point in time, I, I just couldn't stop my uh, appreciation for them while I was going through uh, some of their videos. Uh, as a lot, lot on every domain, not just music. Right. What should libraries do? Now, let's just come out of the government, government and come to what libraries of different nature, corporate libraries, university libraries, schools, you know, other libraries, uh, anything. Right, digital libraries I, I refer to predominantly here. My focus is digital, accessible. What should they do in terms of Carnatic music industry is really create a legacy. They are, they are documenting a legacy, isn't it? We are trying to give language to something that, because we are a music, we are a culture, we are a people of oral traditions. I say, I don't write. This is what had happened for many millennia. So today, there is compulsiveness that's hitting us from three dimensions. We need to document. So what should library deliver at the end of the day? A set of books? A set of orders? Replacing and replenishment of old books with new? No. We need to create legacy. We need to see every section where literature is absent and feed it back to the university. This helps research work. There, there, there are different ways of uh, running library. I mean, one, one thing I'm familiar with is the Ranganathan's codification method, right? Now, when, when, I, when a librarian, so a librarian's re, uh, existence is not nece necessarily taking audit of the number of books dished out and collected back, checked out and checked in. It is really to see what's empty on the, in terms of the domain and domain knowledge. So we must encourage libraries, fund them with the promise with the measurable outcome that they create something for us, for our generations, both current and the ones that are to come. To the end of time, until the end of time. So uh, uh, many libraries, I, I say this with regret. I, again, I took 24 as my magic number between 20 and 24. When I visited these online libraries across India, they had no access. They do call that as Open Public Access Library, OPEL. That's the acronym, OPAL, but I'm sorry to say I failed many times in, in accessing their contents. I couldn't even access their catalog, uh, forget about really accessing the, the source material or the, the, the book. So we really need to focus on library, uh, keeping it current, keeping it accessible. Adding that, upgrading the library with every new thesis that the research scholars bring. Yes, this is our heritage. This is ours. This is our intellectual property. Each doctorate, ladies and gentlemen, must contribute something in the Carnatic music industry. If if the uh, uh, doctorates were awarded in this area, so so what we need is proper research, and when I say proper, I'll qualify it. It has to be pure research. It has to be grassroots research. It has to be done from an indigenous perspective, an Indic perspective. Right? So that means we don't use any foreign material or handbook because otherwise, you know, our beginning will be corrupt. Our very beginning will be uh, deviated. All right? so, so we need to build an inventory of digital assets that we can call our own in the next decade or so or, or two decades. It's a, it's a monumental work because Bharat has got multiple cultures, multiple peoples and, and uh, Bharat has to address and cater to a lot of uh, diversity. So, uh, so this is a colossal work that uh, we need to undertake. So now corporates and other organizations, how can they work with the government? They are responsible for everything that I've said so far. They are not funding a festival, they're not funding their friendship. Yes, there are fixed festivals in fixed postcodes. Can we go beyond that? Can we ask the festival organizers? Yes, Mr. Organizer, I'm happy to give you $20,000 the check is guaranteed, but what is new in this year's festival? Can you give me an audience report of what happened last time? Accountability, typically, you see. It's, it's, it's all e-commerce. It's all commerce, isn't it? I give you cash and you give me something worthwhile. It could be tangible, intangible. So, so 
ये ये सभा लीडर्स और और आल्सो हैंड इन ग्लोब इन मेकिंग दिस एफेक्टिव प्रोसेस सो डिशिंग आउट कैश टू वर्थलेस सबास सबास दैट आर रिपीटिंग आर्टिस्ट इट्स इट्स अ इट्स इट्स अ क्राइम इन टर्म्स ऑफ डिशिंग आउट आर्ट इट्स इट्स अ क्राइम रियली सो वी नीड टू वंस वी गिव ग्रांट्स वी मस्ट एंश्योर दैट द रेसिपियंट इज वर्थी ऑफ इट ही गॉट अ न्यू प्लान ही गॉट अ न्यू प्रोजेक्ट and i want this to be observed and many many researchers re- must really start working on 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 such topics how many festivals are there in india how many repeat performers are there how many new guys have come in you know young people they they take about 10 15 years to really properly settle on the stage what is art is an engagement with an audience isn't it it's an it's an emotive play it's a sway that you have over a large audience or a short audience or even one to one it could be therapy so this this takes time by the time he gets to 40 he's already lost the fizz or she has lost the fizz so it's a huge appeal to organizers corporate sponsors and the sabha leaders and leading festivals to really focus on on some of these aspects and what is success in a carnatic music industry in a concert that this carnatic music industry uh, projects is it necessarily only the crowd pulling ability is it just the ticket selling commercial viability or is there something beyond this is something that we all have to ponder to me i feel these festivals these concert organizers these universities all the shows all the slots top to bottom they are all involved in one and only one business in presenting quality music and preserving and presenting the legacy of carnatic music i think these are these are very primordial if we have to retain the energy levels in this industry i don't know if if i can read this out but i will read this out uh, i was speaking to a, a senior all india radio official i won't even tell you which state right he was he was almost he he mentioned this what's in double quote is what he said were bad him most sabhas are a pr activity i'm not just saying this for a, a artist or musician led organization or a sabha but generally this was this was disheartening for me personally uh so so we need to really go beyond this popularity index the crowd pullers we we need to really do that research we need to talk to university toppers we need to be in touch with uh, uh, many arts industry M- many things are happening in in bringing out uh, good talent so we need to be in touch with them so it's not just dishing out another festival it's not uh, presenting another festival it's not putting up another festival it's putting up a brand new festival with brand new faces i take a oath as an organizer that i don't repeat my 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 artist in any of the slots for the next 3 years or something like that must happen and i know having traveled and worked in the west for decades i know that there are um festivals that don't that don't repeat artists for example yeah i don't want to name names but some of the some of the leading uh, indian music organizations have made a a mental rule an unwritten undocumented rule that every 4 years is is what i would Uh, try and not to repeat an artist you know so this is uh, something that uh, uh, we have to have in our conscience right in terms of organizers if organizers stroke curators abdicate their responsibility and if they just think they are actually entertaining the public for 15 days that's insufficient in terms of safeguarding our leg- legacy yes those 15 days of fun food frolic is fine all merry a lot of money down the drain hole end of 15 days now they're planning for their 2022 version now this is not how we must run so ladies and gentlemen we really have to push for it collectively uh, it's not a blame game it's it's just an analysis and i think we are all in it artists government organizers festivals corporate sponsors we are all in it Uh, 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 I call them as yobbish organizers. Uh, in my previous talk, I had mentioned about yobbish organizers, yobbish impresarios, 
We don't have the concept of impresarios in a big way today, but I'm sure we are catching up in every aspect of life and I'm sure we'll come here too one day. But this yobbishness of trying to rule everything around me is, is something that we got to change. We need to democratize. The middle name of my presentation is really democratizing and giving opportunities. Right, now uh, we have discussed uh, at length everything. We have even discussed what an art is. What is, what is a Carnatic music show, for example? What is a concert? Am I, uh, what is being shared? What is being sold? What is being presented? Is it just an evening? Is it uh, an artist that I'm, uh, I'm presenting? Or if it's someone like uh, certain legends that I know, we are, I, I feel that I'm actually consuming their personality and being impressed with their personality. Is that what we are doing in the evening? Or it's an is it an inspiration from our legacy? So to do all this, and it, it could be all of this plus many more things. So what we really need to do is, is create a beautiful ambience. Music must be presented. Art must be presented with gaiety, with grace. We must create brilliant digital assets. Carnatic music, as I have seen on YouTube and other uh, digital hosting sites, they are far from what I can accept really. Forget about my next generation. We collectively must produce high quality digital assets. It's not another concert. Yes, it's another concert. Yes, I'm also catering it to people who come face to face with me, but the setting is really ambient. I want people, I want audiences to be enchanted, excited. They, I want, there must be a certain take home value to what they hear on the stage. Right, uh, so, so we, we must use our imagination in terms of both audio quality and visuals. And as I'm saying this, I'm sure most of you will imagine many festivals that has impressed you and some that has not uh, quite impressed you. So we need to feed this back to the organizers. We need to present it nice and neat. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm running out of uh, time. I could, be, I could be headed towards the last 10 minutes of my presentation. So what can, further, uh, what can organizers do further? Uh, they can actually have uh, dish out scholarships. They can actually take uh, um, interns, art interns, in helping build their career three-dimensionally. Uh, because if an artist has to survive, there are so many soft skills around. Uh, to get a slot is, is a science today for an art show. right? So, so there are a lot of uh, complementing and supplementing that the artist needs in terms of musicianship skills, in terms of musicality, in terms of presentation skills, uh, many aspects. So, so corporates must take two giant leaps. I'm very proud that India is host to many companies that employs more than 600,000 people, 400,000 people. Yeah, we all, we all uh, can liken to such, uh, uh, most of us may work there or, or we may be beneficiaries in many ways. Our spouses work, our children work uh, in such huge organization. And they have this CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility. So using this, I think we must push for this. How many artists have they uh, owned up, sponsored for a year, for two years, for 10 years, for 20 years? We see the sponsorship models in, in sports. I'm, I'm not envious, but I'm only telling, I'm only asking, I'm only trying to put the question with a big Q, capital Q. Can we go and approach sponsors and ask them to own up certain artists who are absolutely well-deserving? Such questions. And, and uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, organizations and corporations must have newer collaborations as a product. Newer collaboration. It's not another festival. 2018, 2019, 2017, 2013, nothing's changed. Not even the names of the performers, not even the backdrop in many cases. So hence, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I would uh, request you to go through these slides. I'm happy to share these slides. Uh, do share, uh, uh, do write to me at info at dhruvarts.org and I'm happy to share a copy of this. So newer collaborations as opposed to knotted nexus. It's not just a knotted connection. It's uh, sometimes the, the relationship between the sponsor and the festival. Sponsor and the uh, organizer is so knotted 
that both parties don't know how to extricate themselves of the situation, right? So we need to really appreciate uh, that that we need to address the larger interest of the music, music as opposed to musician or the organizer. Uh, this could be slightly uh, uh, not so good to read, but I will make an attempt. Maybe uh, I'll, I'll I'll just read the quote and unquote. Maybe you are really good, but there are many like you for the, for the junior slots. Difficult to choose. But if you can bring a sponsor, we'll give you a slot. Maybe you are really too good, but there are many like you for the junior slots. But if you can bring a sponsor, we'll give you a slot. So this is, uh, this is something uh, uh, that Economic Times quoted. So, so the source of this this not so beautiful, not so beautiful sentences from Economic Times. What instead we must do is produce thematic concerts, youth festivals, you know, workshops, bring in university toppers, bring in non-resident Indians. You know, we have a lot of NRI talent pool. Bring them in. They are happy to zoom in and then share their experiences, their university music, their their uh, collaborations, their shows, their gigs. Uh, you know, things like that. Um, I would like to, this slide is absolutely brilliant. So how do we do talent search in India? How do the festivals organizers reach out to the new talents? Uh, the one in red kills the uh, concept. Isne usne bol diya, to humne hire kar diya. So this is not how, there must be a metric beyond this is, is what uh, I think and most of you might agree. And what is an artist's responsibility? He has to instill evoke and incite passion. There was a, a Tamil music themed concert, two days of Tamil music and I like the way I, I went through the whole recording, I, I watched it. The performer was absolutely brilliant in designing the concert. One day he took secular music and the RTP Ragam Thanam Pallavi was on the god. Uh, the religious music per se, the, the original traditional Carnatic music and the second day all the songs were, were the, the traditional Carnatic and the RTP was, was a secular one and he took, he sounded names uh, that really stoked emotions and uh, many other aspects, you know, those aspects that make people come back to the artist. So an artist really has to design his concert in, in a very nice way, it has to be comprehensively thought through. Preparation. The Carnatic quotient is fine, you know, it is all impromptu. I'm singing um, Kalpana Swaras, I'm singing Alapna and Kanda, Trishra, all those nuances are fine. But all I'm saying is, how does an artist present himself? He has to cater to the connoisseur, the layman, the language fanatic, and you know, the philosophy fanatic. He wants a song from a particular f philosophy because that festival is, for example, uh, Ram Nomi concert series. The deliverance has to be around Ram, Lord Ram. So things like that or another Navaratri festival in Kerala. So it has to be, the compositions have to be a, a fitting that, that particular setting. So, so a, an artist has a lot of responsibility in engaging with the Rasika. So moving back to or going forward, we have spoken enough about this. I don't think we need to, a couple of things that sticks uh, 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 that I want to really reiterate here is the importance of curricula uh, in universities. Uh, we must have a database of the alumni, of all the past students. We need to evaluate the processes of the university or, or the schools or the music institutions or the colleges and there must be student exchanges between and across universities within and without India if needed and NRI sessions as I mentioned earlier and a 360 degree feedback right? Like in a corporate sense of the term. Um, uh, so 360 degrees feedback. A trainer gets appreciation or a feedback from the trainee. It's a good model, right? This, this will stop uh, many, uh, this will enhance better learning and transparency in, in how the course is handled. One number for you that you will definitely not forget uh, from this presentation. India in one particular year, 2018, we dished out 40,000 plus PhDs. Mind-boggling. 
colossal number of uh, uh, doctoral awards, right? 40,000 plus. And I may not be too proud to say that uh, Karnataka stands at number two and Tamil Nadu stands at number one. Karna Tamil Nadu dished out 5,800 doc doctorates and Karnataka did some 5,100 or something like that. This is statistics from 2019. So now, where is the database of all this? Uh, research scholars' presentation, their dissertation. What did they contribute to, to their chosen fields? And if it's music, I'm, I'll be deeply interested in analyzing. So what did you, doctoral, uh, what, what, what did these many doctor, uh, doctorates bring into the society? Did this improve humanity in, in any way? Did it challenge the premise or did it, did, did it change the status quo in one way or the other? No. 40,000 in one year, ladies and gentlemen, think about this. So uh, you can see that this slide has got certain uh, uh, you know, we, we really need to up the game, up the stakes here. Our, our course curricula must really resonate and vibe with what's happening today in the industry. It's not just a set of songs that a, a music university or, or if it's theatrics, a certain set of uh, whatever uh, is there uh, in their presentation, but it is about the metaphysical uh, requirements around the core subject. If, if it's a, a master of performing arts in drama, and theatrics, that's fine, core. But then how do you present it? It's the design, it's the lighting, it's the marketing, it's the entrepreneurial skills. It is your ability to collaborate with government agencies. You know, many things. So the, this is where I think you, our universities and, and teaching institutions must be headed to. Otherwise, it's just one dimensional. The students will fail. Also, what universities must do is... Uh, create job slots. Why would I do a master degree? Why would I do a bachelor's degree? Why would I do a three months diploma if there is no end of the tunnel light for me, right? If a student roadmap is not leading to a, a resourceful job, a resourceful opportunity, a bright career, why would, what is the reason that a, a course pursuant will, will retain the energy levels? So, Universities must market their courses. They must talk to univers uh, other universities. They must talk to the local political representatives. They must talk to the government agencies. They must speak to funders. They must somehow sell. Look at the table here I have to the right, top right. Tamil Nadu has 14 music colleges. Andhra, 8. Kerala has got 15 music colleges. Karnataka has got 24 music colleges. It could be universities, colleges, Telangana, 6, and Maharashtra, 57. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the number of colleges that receive government funds. So we are stakeholders in a big way to get them to see if they can do something, some positive difference into the, into the scheme of Carnatic music industry that we discussed. So uh, uh, again, this is not just for university. Uh, you know, they need to create jobs. We need music. We need arts. We need drama. We need theatrics. In, in, common, in community spaces, in parks, open spaces, right? We need more column inches in the media. Uh, something uh, of focus to the venues. They must be neo-themed, right? Who will go to a, a, a venue where there are no public convenience arrangements, right? And if you, for example, there's a concert venue and if you ask uh, the uh, audiences to take their shoes off, is the shoe protected in a nice uh, a hygienic place? Do they have slots? Do they have cloak rooms? Right, some of these things because we are operating in 2021 and we really need to up the game. Otherwise the engagement of the younger generation or their latching on uh, a potential uh, will slowly dwindle away. We must think about this. So the venue must have that sense of vibe, that feel of chill, you know, that cool factor. Right, there's a case study here I will present, but this is beautiful. Ch Chennai, or Margali Utsav as, it, as they call it. Uh, it's a world famous theme. Uh, it's, it's for everyone. I will leave this on the slides, uh, but this is, this is a brilliant story in itself. Just in 2019, 50,000 floating audiences. Can I call them Sabah Hoppers? descended on to Chennai to enjoy, what, about 3,800 concerts or to pick and choose from 3,800 concerts from across 90 sabhas or venues. 
So this is, there is no such thing in the world. There's no parallel to Margali Utsav. So most of us must try to, most of the cities must have something on these lines. I was reading about Mr. Kannan, who has been visiting Chennai for 33 years. And he comes there at 7.30. He parks himself across many sabhas up until late night and then returns home. He enjoys the parallel music festival, parallel food festival, par parallel merchandise festivals. So he, he enjoys his, his December in, in Chennai that way. So music being the epicenter of all, uh, of, uh, or the agenda of the day trip to Chennai, he enjoys everything that, that comes around. So cities must be designed around this. So uh, uh, thematic concerts. So during uh, December season, Madras will be lit up with many things, right? There will be thematic concerts, youth festivals, and webcasts, quizzes. And in fact, there's a, a sort of a, a two-pager uh, newspaper type of thing that comes. It's called Kacheri Buzz. So we really have to get under the skin of why and how Chennai, Chennai behaves like that, all right? It could be their only month of good, good weather, you, some of you might say, but, but uh, every every district, every local uh, hamlet will have something good to offer and we need to design such programs. Uh, a fortnight of music in every hamlet is not a bad idea for the governments and organizers. And uh, Chennai's gastronomy during the Margali Utsav is everyone's uh, favorite, though I hear that they're all heavily overpriced. Right. Uh, uh, one, of, uh, one of the things I was excited was uh, there was a guy who was called as Kashi Halwa Krishnamurti, right? Because People were less interested in the music, but more interested in his kashi halwa. And uh, this guy, this uh, uh, chef or cook happened to be uh, MS, uh, our dear MS Subhlakshmi ji's uh, private cook. So, so there are a lot of side attractions, you know, exotic food, exotic uh, uh, dresses, clothings on offer. So a festival ambience is important to sell music. Uh, is what uh, uh, one of the takeaways from uh, Margali Utsavis. And almost on a concluding note, uh, I would like to quote R.R. Ravi Shankar, chairman of the Karnataka Fine Arts Council, where he says, one of the top institutions in the south of India that has in place a rigorous selection process involving competitions, gradations of young artists based on talent and allocation of specific time slots based on performance, thereby creating benchmarks for artistic achievement. He says, uh, this is about Madras Music Academy. I'm sorry, that's missing. So Madras Music Academy is one of the top institutions which has a very rigorous stated process to, to promote and uh, uh, promote artists and slot them in. So maybe this is not the best, but definitely uh, something for many organizations to uh, uh, emulate, as I mentioned. So as I mentioned, the top uh, Pareto analysis, I'll come back to Pareto analysis while I conclude. So there are then tops of us, top performers, Ladies and gentlemen, this is no modern art. What you see on the back side is no C++ programmer's screen. This is the concert schedule of a performer who has just come back from the US after performing in 16 concerts across whatever number of miles, uh, thousands of miles from east to west coast, west to east coast. And then he comes back to Chennai and performs what? Uh, 20, 20 odd concerts? Now this is what I'm telling you. Some of them are heavily booked and some heavily talented people are underbooked. So we got to democratize this and see if Pareto defense can be delivered in, in, in our coming festivals, in our design of the future events. So this is an overdose for any performer. So these, uh, these are some of the thematic offerings uh, that Chennai uh, presents. And uh, I'm sorry, here the text is too slow, but I've again listed top 40 sabas. Right? And I don't want to read them, so uh, it doesn't matter if you are not able to get to the text here. But then top sabas, top musicians. I've not named the top musicians. I had to take the slide off uh, on the insistence of the organizer. So uh, top sabas, top performers, top... So this, this culture has to stop and democratization must begin somewhere while retaining respect for the top performers. I'm myself a big fan of many of the top performers today. Uh, I get onto the edge of my seat when I'm hearing to them. Right, so we have to somehow uh, take the message of the composers of the Carnatic Trinity and beyond, many dasas, haridasas, and create a unified society. Wasn't the message of 
the composers beyond uh, certain rhetoric, certain social uh, situations. They gave their lives to create music. They didn't even copyright them. Right? We are using their music freely. The least that we must do is use the message, the implicit message of these great Vagyayakaras, the composers, writers uh, of the Asturias, whom we worship today on photographs and we have festivals themed and named after them. But ladies and gentlemen, let's make a resolve to collectively take the message of these composers to create that social harmony, to, to state that music is beyond just a show and a slot. On that note, I conclude my presentation. Thanks to Dhruv Arch.